well I need to plant some trees and that means I need to dig holes. Apparently some people use these to dig holes with. But this doesn't seem fun at all. And if I'm not having fun, that means I'm doing it wrong. So we need to fix that. Now in order to fix that problem, I noticed a broken tractor right there. Now that seems like a lot more fun. This is a garden tractor I built about 15 years ago. Um, if you notice, it's made of a lot of different segments of two by four square tubing. Um, I had a shop where I was making trailer parts. These are all the drops left over of excess material. I had a whole pallet full of uh, 18 inches long sections of two by four tubing. So that's what I made the whole thing out of. Now the hydraulics, the tank, the valve, the pump, all that good stuff, all came off a street sweeper that was being scrapped. Uh, so that was all salvage. Uh, this has always had hydraulic leaks ever since I first built it. And then a few things I bought from the surplus center, hoses, stuff like that, but basically pieced together. Uh, I did get new tires though, those are pretty nice. Got a three speed transmission with a high and low box from a Sears Suburban tractor, I believe it is and a uh, diesel engine um, Chinese made off eBay was cheap um, and you see the motor is stuffed in there pretty much I designed the frame around the motor the clearances are uh, pretty tight it all worked pretty well until that tie rod broke so we're gonna re-weld that um, there's a few things like I use just big flex tubing long strands of it zip ties um, I probably should revise that someday I'm not sure if I'm gonna get, get that now I also have a flat front tire. These are standard um, boat trailer wheels, boat trailer spindles. The reason I did that is my plan was to have these wheels make it a trailer. The three point hitch is actually made out of tubing for a, a receiver type hitch. And what I would put my plan was, is to hook that up to a truck, use a three point hitch to push down, lift the back wheels up and ride on the front wheels as a trailer which I did once, and only once, because that is way too narrow to be stable. So uh, that whole plan didn't really work out. Now, another thing I did is wheel weights are really expensive for these things, and I didn't want to buy wheel weights. So I took a slug of steel, I don't know if you can see how deep that is, it was about 10 inches, 10 and a half inches diameter, and about five inches thick. And I welded a rim outer to that slug of steel, so that rim is around 100 pounds, so I don't really need wheel weights. It's got a lot of traction. Also, that's one by six steel plate. That's pretty solid. This is two by two solid steel. So the whole rear end of this is pretty uh, heavy, which has for traction. It does pretty well in traction. You can see the main arms that it uses for lifting. There's the lift cylinders. Again, two by four tubing, section, 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 all pieces of drops I had. Um, now another thing I added, you can see here, right here is an arm going straight across. That goes to this rocker assembly, which the tilt cylinder's on. That way as the bucket goes up and down, it tries to keep the um, bucket level. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than just straight rotating. Another thing I did was this plate here has a pattern of holes. So when you want to bolt things to the back, they can be moved up and down or side to side. There's a lot of attachment points here. So I wasn't sure what I was going to end up doing with it. I had actually considered a small backhoe arm on this, but I uh, never got around to building it. The other thing I did was I added quick disconnects on the tilt cylinder for the bucket here. And there's pins you can pull. You can remove the whole bucket. So that way we can attach different accessories here and use the tilt cylinder uh, hydraulics uh, to do other things and use other hydraulic power. I set this up offset so that way you can have one hand on the hydraulics, one hand on the steering wheel. Uh, that's why the steering wheel isn't on center. Here's the leftover of my original steering system that didn't work. I had a gearbox mounted here going straight through and down. Uh, the first steering box really didn't work well. Then I modified it and now it is using, uh, it goes to the steering wheel through a U-joint to a U-joint to a Chevy Vega box which goes to a tie rod, which I recently broke. First thing I do is take off this broken tie rod. Alrighty. 
Now, when I did this, probably oh, 12 years ago or so when I replaced the box, I did two tiny tack welds. And that held up for like a decade. So uh, I think I'll add a little more weld. Probably should have fully welded it before, but yeah, it was working, so I just ignored it. Hopefully this tire holds air long enough to get what I need to done, and I don't actually have to fix it properly. Perfect. Another problem I had is I had used a regular garden tractor battery back here. Uh, this is actually a 10 horsepower diesel motor. That little tractor that little tractor battery could not swing that diesel motor over. So I never actually got it to start properly with the little uh, lawn and garden battery under there. Now because the regular battery didn't work, I've been just throwing a car battery right on this plate here and uh, driving it that way. Uh, this does have a recoil start, so I can do that. Got the battery properly secured right up against the exhaust pipe. Um, I'll probably put a bungee cord on it at some point, but uh, let's make sure it starts. There we go, got a connection. Nope, bad connection. Try that again. Nope. Wire's getting nice and warm. Hey, the battery's dead. Got a new battery, but let's see if she starts. Something is just not right here. I'm gonna try the old fashioned way. This thing doesn't have glow plugs, so we're going to go with uh, explosion in a can here. Especially if I got a crank in my hand. Well, I should have a ball of fire soon. Oh, got something. Try a little more. Oh man, it wants to go. I got the tractor into the shop here. Now it's time to determine what the problem with the starting is, because uh, pull starting is also not fun. Um, well, this terminal is just a little bit suspicious, because, you know, all it is is stranded wire crammed under a nut. But, um, also this terminal is a sheet metal one that's deformed, so only had a little tiny point of contact. So, first I'm gonna fix the terminal issue then uh, we'll see what happens. I don't think both batteries are dead. So I'm thinking there's a uh, voltage loss somewhere here. Could even be this little end that's frayed down to almost nothing. You know, any one of those things could be it. Probably all of them. So let's get a little fixing done. There, nice and shiny. All right, now let's see what happens. Well, that's the positive cable. Um, this is negative ground, so if that touches anything, it all shorts out and catches on fire. Um, but it's not touching anything, so we're just going to ignore that. It should be fine. Don't tell anyone. Now, I've attached the voltmeter to the actual terminals, because I have a gauge here that tells me the volts that the starter is seeing, and a meter here which tells me how many volts the battery has. So let's hit this. That's only going down to 11. This is going down to like, well, low, eight or so. So uh, that means there's a bad connection still somewhere. What I meant to say before was this is a perfect access port to check the voltage in the middle of the cable. That's what it's there for. All right, the cable has voltage, the starter does not. Now this really greasy terminal right here is the starter one. Doesn't it feel tremendously hot? Usually these things are, it's warm, but it's not hot. All right, now what you should do 
is pull this thing all the way off, clean up all the connections, make sure everything works right. What I'm going to do is just wiggle it right here and tighten it back down. And hopefully just the, having moved the nut is enough to clean it. Let's see how that does. Since both the terminal isn't working, something that wire is not working, and it's sort of a big open area that's live, I'm just gonna go ahead and change that wire. I'll share up another one of my scrap bin. I found some wire in my scrap bin. This is actually left over from when I unfuel injected my Grand Cherokee. Uh, this is way, 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 way too long. So I'm just gonna use it as is because I don't want to waste another terminal. Yeah, you know, this starter itself is actually pretty hot now that I'm hanging on to it. I wonder if I have a bad starter. Used to work. Apparently that battery cable is not too long because now it can serve as the tie down along with being a uh, cable. So it's double duty here. That's efficiency right there. Um, I may have a bad starter here, which means we're just gonna completely forget about getting electric starter working and go on to the next thing. Cause let's just keep moving ahead. You didn't see that. Now here I have a couple of accessories I made for this tractor. So you can actually remove that bucket and attach this post hole digger or uh, this hydraulic powered rototiller. And then use the tilt cylinder in order to spin the hydraulic motors on these. Um, for what I'm doing now, post hole diggers would be useful. Rototiller not so much. But I didn't want to buy an extra set of hydraulic hoses, so I gotta steal the hydraulic hoses and disconnects off this, put them on that before I can use that one. Stolen hoses are hooked up. Uh, they're sure to get caught on something because there's way too much length here. But uh, I think we're ready to try it out. Since the starter's not working anyway, I went ahead and took off the battery and all that junk. Uh, just I didn't want it falling in the uh, hydraulics. And uh, we're just gonna pull start this for now. before with the big auger I thought the small one might do it what's happening is as I push down it lifts the front of the tractor up and because I have this fully pivoting it starts to flop over so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eliminate pivoting this way and only let it pivot this way which it needs to do in order to go up and down and stay straight side to side I'm just gonna get rid of that so we're just gonna put a bolt through these uh, pivots and lock them in place this is the frame it's on it pivots this way on those bolts, and then I put a piece of tubing and sleeved it here so it pivots that way. So what I'm gonna do is just drill a hole straight through here and uh, lock those two together so that way it's stuck straight up and down.
that's doing a pretty good job for a post so that's pretty cool but that's not big enough for a tree so let's uh try out this one Now let's see what this thing does. that squeaking uh, basically what's happening is when I put a load on it the uh, belt to the hydraulic pump is slipping so I've got to figure out a way to either make a bigger belt um, it's already pretty tight so I've got to figure out some way to stop that from slipping if I want to really uh, make a serious hole with this thing this is sort of working but not exactly what I want um, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to keep work on this tractor and do some updates and uh, do some more work with it but for now I think I'm going to pull out a bigger toy. This is my mini excavator. This thing is pretty much the exact opposite end of the spectrum as that American 25 I worked on a while back. Because this thing's tiny. Uh, this is a John Deere Model 15. Uh, it's actually one of the older mini excavators. still has metal tracks on it. And um, I got it cheap, of course. When I got this, the planetary drives on the rear... Underneath these rear drive sprockets, there's a set of um, gears that are planetary drive. Um, this one is not ha doesn't have all of them. And some were busted when I got it, so I evened it out and spaced the equal number of gears on both sides. So as I recall, they're supposed to have four planetaries on each side. This one only has three, so I don't do any heavy pushing with it. Um, and I handmade the bearings too. It was just roller bearings, just used stock and, you know. But I'm a little leery about putting a lot of power to it. A few oil leaks, a few other things. It smokes a little bit. Other than that, it works great. So uh, let me uh, show you around it. Obviously, we have the standard excavator arm. Everything's just like the full-size ones. This one does have a little grater blade on it down below. Inside controls are standard excavator stuff. These two control the arm. Um, we have two levers that control the drive instead of the foot pedals of the big excavator. And uh, this has one other unique feature where you can switch whether your rotation is the whole cab turning or you also can turn the arm on the thing, which this gives the effect you can move the arm sideways, turn the cab, and you can dig right along with your tracks. You can actually dig off side of where you are, which is handy for trenching. Um, at some point it had a heater. I've never had that working. Uh, there we have the extra control for the blade up and down. We have an hour meter that clearly isn't from this vehicle, so I don't think that's right at all. A temperature gauge that shows it overheats fairly regularly. Um, got a glow plug light because you need those to start it. In the back here, we've got ooh, a lot of spiders and a little old, uh, I think that's a Yanmar three cylinder, a little diesel. Now I actually haven't driven this in over a year, maybe two. So, uh, before it never had any problems, we'll see if anything new cropped up. Luckily, diesels are pretty reliable when they sit. The fuel doesn't go bad. You don't have a lot of the issues you do with gas motors. So I'm hopeful it'll work, but can't guarantee anything. Check the oil here. Oh, really dark and it's got some. So uh, we'll just wipe off those spider webs I just got on it. And we'll call that good. Luckily, I disconnected the battery here last time I used it, so hopefully that battery still has a charge from a couple years ago. So we'll just uh, put that on here. Well, we got nothing for battery. Yeah. 
Not yet. Well, in just that little short drive, we started overheating. So, um, I'm gonna see, hey, the temperature gauge went way up and then back down, so maybe a stuck thermostat, or maybe it's low on coolant, but uh, I've gotta do something there, at least check that out. I bought a brand new filter to change the oil when I bought this machine around a decade ago. I haven't got around to changing the oil yet, so maybe I'll do that. Cause you know, 10 years or so, probably time for an oil change. Now, one nice thing about these excavators, is um, because you can turn the whole cab, sometimes that makes maintenance easier. Um, in this case, normally the oil pan will be directly above the tracks if you're pointed straight. But by turning the cab 90 degrees, it's all easy to get to. So, very convenient. There we go. Beautiful. Well, I appreciate that the previous owner actually used a Wix filter. When I first got this machine, I bought myself a Wix replacement. Hopefully it's not water damaged because the box looks a little watery. But, um, oh yeah, it's rusty inside. Well, I'll be cleaning this up first before I do anything else. Now I'm done underneath here. I've got a refill of oil, but everything is covered with all sorts of dirt, pine needles, spider webs, all sorts of things. So we do a little engine degreaser, hose it down. That way I can leave a puddle there and I don't have to lay in it afterwards. And uh, hopefully it'll be a little easier to work with later. And it'll cool the motor down. Now this here is the air intake, so I'm going to avoid watering that. Actually, maybe I'll shove a rag in that for now. That'll make life easier. There we go. Nice and foamy. Not perfect, but at least I don't feel like dirt's going to go into the crankcase as soon as I take off the filler cap. So now I can go and add oil in it. I'm ready to add oil this, and I actually have the manual. Uh, the manual says it takes only two quarts of oil. Of course, I buy my diesel oil in two gallon containers. So, uh, got some cheap measuring cups. And four cups is a quart. So uh, we'll just do two measuring cups full of oil into there and we should be good. Actually, measuring cups are pretty handy for this kind of thing. It's like having a pour spout helps with pouring. Go figure. Check the level and see if we're in the ballpark. Yep, it's on the stick in the safe zone. So I guess two quarts really is the little tiny bit it takes. Now I'm going to let that settle down some more, check it again, start it up, pump the filter full, and then check it again. See if the battery charge enough to refire. I added some antifreeze to the system. It really wasn't that low. Uh, so I don't think that was a problem. Hopefully it was just thermostat stuck. We'll find out soon. But I did notice that this cap is completely busted off this overflow tank. There really isn't one left. I also noticed that my uh, cap for my water jug I was using is just about the right size. So we're just going to borrow this. Something like that. Something like that. There we go. Perfect. Now it's attached. I expect the fact that pretty much every fin in this entire radiator is flattened probably has something to do with the uh, overheating on a regular basis thing. Just a guess. Now normally, greasing isn't interesting enough to put on a video. But this one grease fitting right here is actually interesting. Let me show you why. And another neat fact about excavators, you don't need a jack.
Got the track nice and loose there. This needs adjustment. Watch what happens when I grease this grease fitting here. That's actually an adjuster. That's a hydraulic piston that actually adjusts the front wheel forward and adjusts the tension on the track. If you ever need to grease an excavator, watch out. Some of these fittings are not just for greasing. You can stretch out the track if you pump too much grease in there. That looks about right. Don't actually remember the last time I put diesel on this, so probably should add some. It's been years. Is adding fuel considered maintenance? There's a sight glass on the side here so you can see your hydraulic oil level. Um, it's not there, so I'm gonna add some. Oh, it's even got a little ball. I don't think I've ever had fluid in that. Perfect. If you guys saw that but this tree started wiggling as soon as I hit it with the bucket this is not in there well all the roots are rotted I thought I was gonna dig down to where I could cut the roots but they're gonna come out in no time here so I gotta move some vehicles because this thing's coming down one way or the other That actually worked surprisingly well. Um, it landed right where we wanted it and uh, nothing broke. So, yay. <laughs> now there's one neat feature about this particular machine. Now I am digging right next to a fence here. And I already know that I have a water line right about here. Which means I can't put the machine over here and scoop this way because I'll break the water line. I know this because I've already done this before. So what I did here is I turned the arm relative to the cab. And then turn the cab sideways. So the effect this gives me is now I can go right up against this fence. I can dig that way not disturb the line here and make a good size hole right there. So uh, that's a neat feature about this machine. You can actually dig right next to a wall or a fence or something. Normally you can only dig on the center of the machine. This one you can make it go offset. So neat feature.
first we add some soil. A GoPro. And then we turn it on. That one may not have been my best idea. The uh, new soil is mixed and ready to go. Add our tree. Now I'm going to take this thing, roll it around, and do the other side. I realize I'm doing this wrong. I'm running out of daylight for this camera, so uh, I'm going to cut off the filming here. I got some more filling to do, but it's the same basic idea. Now, I probably could have used a shovel to do this, and it would have been a lot faster, and probably easier, but um, I wouldn't have had any fun. And uh, like I say, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. So I had to change the way I'm doing it to make sure it was fun. So even though it's less efficient and takes a lot more equipment, it's a lot more fun. So I'm having a good time. Till next time, you keep having fun too. We'll see you later.